This is Karen Walby Solomon, and welcome to my podcast, Crushing On. Welcome to episode four. Thank you to everyone who's been rating and reviewing the episodes. And a special shout out to Alison, who wrote a review this week. We really, really appreciate it. Please, if you enjoy the show, and even if you don't, although why would you be listening to this if you don't, but if you enjoy the show, please recommend it to your friends, your family, your neighbors, your long lost cousins, ex-boyfriends, bosses, whoever, literally anyone you meet on the street, who you meet on the street while wearing a mask. More importantly, please do not go close to people or talk to people without masks. We want this corona gone. Please recommend the podcast to them. Tell them about it. All support helps. All support and help mean the same thing. Everything helps. Today's guest is Sloan, who is notorious on social media for his witty remarks and his vast knowledge of pop culture. And it was such a score for us that he agreed to do this chat. And it was so lovely. We spoke about the shows we grew up with in the 90s. And we spoke about what we're watching now, um, how much we love, how diverse TV has gotten and what more we would like to see. And it was honestly such a lovely conversation. Even afterwards, Rebecca, who does our editing, was like, he was so great. We should have him back. So if the show gets support and if we last long enough, we would love to have him back again. Before I go to the interview, let's just do a spoiler warning. There is a spoiler and we will put the time in the show notes. But there's a spoiler for season two of Sex Education. And that's about it. Otherwise, please enjoy. Let us know what you think. And I'll catch you at the end of the episode. Okay. So what have you been consuming over the lockdown? Like, what have you been watching and things? I've been watching a whole lot of romance type things. I pretend to be like a really bitchy person, but I'm such a softy. And literally I've been consuming so much like love stories lately. Like what? And it's so weird because like one, two of my favorite shows that came out this year, yes, this year, is the first one I watched was The Baker and the Beauty. Which I've was, been hearing so much about this. Oh, it is so cute. It's like an American remake of, I think, an Israeli format. I'm not sure. Um, where this baker, this Cuban baker mm-hmm. uh, who lives with his family above the bakery, falls in love with this huge business mogul, famous social media star. And it's like this whole, they are two completely different people from two completely different worlds and the love story behind that. But like the secondary romance in that was so cute and so unexpected where his brother falls mm-hmm. in love with someone who I'm not actually going to say because I don't want to spoil it for you uh, okay. in case you do watch it. Um, and then I also watched this really, really sweet show called Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist. Oh my gosh, I really want to see that. There's like 50 people that I love that's in that show. It is so, so, so good. And I don't like things with singing. <laughs> I hate it. anything Glee-esque is not for me. But it was so well done. And the songs that they chose. And they let the cast sing as well. Which for me is mm-hmm. like nice. because. Some of the actors, you can hear that they are not singers, but the emotion is what this character and what this actor is trying to portray to you. So to have that actual person sing and not have it be like a voiceover is what was so, so, so good. Um, one of those shows got renewed and one got cancelled, so it was it's a bit sweet week for me. The Baker and the Beauty got cancelled. Oh, no. I think I read that this morning, if I'm not mistaken. I think it only came out yesterday. So how many seasons are they out right now? One of each. And you know, it's like those trial shows where it's not even like a full 22. Yes. So you'll get like nine episodes, <laughs> but it was nine perfect episodes. So these are your, your, your top shows right now. That's what I watched during lockdown. In addition to the stuff that I watch like normally that mm. I've been following. I just finished Insecure this morning. And I followed it? it up with like the last two episodes. Um, it was so, so, so good. There's this thing that Issa Rae said. I don't know what red carpet she was on. 
um, and the interviewer asked her who she's rooting for tonight, and she said, "I'm rooting for everybody black." <laughs> Yes, was so it the Oscars like, or something? Was that the Oscars? Yes. So when I watch things, like I'm rooting for everybody black. So I'm going to consume black made art first. So I'm going to be following things mm-hmm. like my Instagram. But then I'm also going to watch that I thought was absolutely so well done was Watchmen. Yes, that um, was amazing. Regina Hall, not Hall, Regina King. King was absolutely incredible in that. But like, and I didn't know. Like Regina King, who does like <laughs> emotional stories and stuff to go into like genre fair and do like a superhero type thing. It's just absolutely incredible to me. And I think, I, was it eight episodes or nine episodes? They told such a perfect story in those nine episodes where the very last thing that happened tied into the very first episode. It was and piece that of art. to me was perfect. But it didn't also like take you by surprise. Like I took a while to watch it, but I didn't expect it to be as good or as entertaining as it was though. That's the thing. I only watched it now during lockdown. And I think that came out last year already. Mm. So like by the beginning of the year, people had already moved on from that. And I watched it in my own time. And I think that's what I enjoyed so much about it was that I could consume it in my own time. Yeah. The one thing that I struggle with, or not necessarily struggle with, that I just don't get the hype behind is consuming things when other people consume it. Like there's mm-hmm. such a rush to watch everything as it comes out. Because especially for someone who's so active on social media like yeah. myself, I cannot run the risk of coming across a spoiler on Twitter and then all of the time I invested in this show is like gone to waste because I'm just a day off with my viewing. Mm. So I prefer to watch things in my own time. So all of those things that I read about the show or the movie or whatever, when it came out, by the time I watched it, I would have forgotten all of those things I read already. I also prefer to watch everything all at once, you know, instead of having to wait every week. So I also prefer to wait a bit, wait till it's done, watch it all at once. And then, but I think with those like really hyped up stuff, it's, it is difficult. And I suppose also with reality shows, the minute you get a spoiler in a reality show and you know who's leaving, or you know, exactly. that's the worst because what's the point of watching if you know your favorite character is going to leave or whatever. But I also think that that's one of the... Th- Blessings and also the curses that comes with living in this Netflix era. And Mm -hmm. I say Netflix in air quotes because Netflix isn't the only streaming service we have. Where everything is packaged so that you can binge it in a day or two. Where for those of us who grew up being addicted to television, (laughs) we had to wait week for week for every episode. We had to... A full 22 episode season means we spend like a few months every single week just following this one specific show. And now you get to watch 13 episodes over a weekend and then move on from there. Like I was thinking about, um, this is very embarrassing, but I used to really like Seventh Heaven when I was small. And, I was uh, upset with Seventh Heaven. <laughs> and that would be literally all I spoke about, all I thought of. I would... Like, I still have diaries where I wrote in, okay, 7 o'clock on a Tuesday, SBC 2, time to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I have, in my schedule, it must be 7 to 7 time. I need that time. And like, as you said, I will, I'll be like waiting whole year for this show. And then within two days, I'll be done with it. And it's exactly. not that long. What is Mary going to do? Is she stealing? Um, Happier as happy. <laughs> so what is your, what is the first show that you remember? being like that kind of obsessed with where you were like, can't wait for the next episode. I think think it varies from like the different points Mm -hmm. in my life. When I was younger, I had like a huge crush on Jessica Alba. And it's so weird because Jessica Alba is a woman and you would expect my first crush to be a man. But I think at that point, I didn't even know (laughs) that I wasn't necessarily crushing on Jessica Alba. I was in the early stan days if i can put it that way i was technically just a stan and i was obsessed with dark angel 
Oh, and I remember Dark too. Angel used to play on a Friday on SABC3. And I grew up in like a very religious household. Mm. So anything like sci-fi or that is not like kosher, my mom would always say like, this is stable, good, it's demonic. Mm. And I'm just like, ugh. <laughs> so I had to like find ways to watch this. And I think it was just for me, seeing a woman kicking ass has been and always will be one of my favorite things. That's why like, I loved Dark Angel and I was obsessed with Buffy growing up. Mm. Um, and I don't know if you remember She Spies? Was it called She Spies? With that also one, played on it. Yes, it was like three um, women. Yes. Oh. Not necessarily good women, but that get recruited into this like little spy agency. It was like Charlie's Angels, but a TV show. It was exactly yes. that, yes. And that was like the things I consumed growing up. And just a fierce woman will always be something where I'll be like, yes, I love stuff like that. Even the, I don't know if you've watched the Charlie's Angels reboot. which is a reboot but also like a continuation of the franchise mm. and a lot of people went into it saying "Ugh, no we don't want a reboot blah 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 but when you watch it it's actually a very good story it's actually the action is i'll say more realistic than the predecessors and by that i mean the drew barrymore lucy Liu, cameron yeah. d version because like in their Charlie's Angels, they were jumping off of buildings, swinging from electric mm. cables, and smashing through a department store window, landing on your neck, but being fine, you know? Yeah. With this one, like, the jumps and the kicks and the stuff is, like, not out of the realm of possibility for the human body. So that's why I enjoyed it, because it's more grounded in reality. But I also think that with this reboot, type culture a lot of filmmakers are realizing they can make new stories and just blast on the name the of name. The, yeah the name I mean, recognition, yes so it's like you can have another action story starring three women and just put charlie's angels on it and people will yeah. probably go and watch it even if it's eight to watch yeah. they'll go and watch it because it exactly. has that oh, it's like that four weddings and a funeral that it was nothing like the original four weddings and the funeral but they oh, just I watched that yeah, the girl so, from um, The Fast and the Furious was in there. Um, Natalie Emanuel. Yeah. yeah. As I say, Game of Thrones. But yeah, Fast the Game and of Fury. Thrones girl, yes. But yeah, That's so, how you know we are two completely different <laughs> people. Like from two completely different sides of the internet. <laughs> you see her as Game of Thrones. I see her as Fast and Furious. <laughs> oh yeah, N- Natalie Emanuel. Yes. So I'm like, yeah, that's what they do now. So I think... I mean, yes, they want us to go in with the perception of the old versions, but we also shouldn't be judging it by that because it's new stories. If it was the same people back again, I would understand why you would judge it by, you know, the standards of what came before. Exactly. But yeah, the first time I saw Jessica Alba was in Never Been Kissed. And she was like the only brown person I in there. I literally the- just watched that again this week. <laughs> Rosie Jose Geller. Oh, I love I, that movie on videotape. I loved it. <laughs> I, I think, think Drew Barrymore is probably also like one of my more authentic, if you say crush, I mean like I I wouldn't even call it a crush. I actually love Drew Barrymore. Mm. Like if I met her, I would tell her in real life, I love you so much. <laughs> like not in a weird way, but like I think I pray for your family more than I pray for my own sometimes. <laughs> She just seems like one of those people that I never want the internet to find a way or a reason to cancel her. I always want to hold her in a special place in my heart. She has a very relatable quality to her. Exactly. I hear that she's getting like a talk show or something. Like a oh, Kelly I Clarkson type vibe. Yes. Firstly, well done to Kelly Clarkson yeah, on she's her talk well. show. Because she is not necessarily the person that I would think of for Mm. the talk show, but she is actually killing it. But she also has a kind of likable quality to her. So I can, I could actually see her. She's like your cousin. Uh. She like, she (laughs) feels like, no, my cousin Kelly. You know my cousin Kelly. Everyone knows her. (laughs) Yeah. You know what? I'm really excited to watch. Um... 
and I think it just came out recently, is Love, Victor. I don't know if you've heard about it. Has it come out yet? Is that the Love Simon series? I think series? it has come out. It's the series based on, or like a continuation of Love, Simon. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you remember in the movie, Simon was the high school guy that yeah. narrated the whole story. And it was a sweet coming out story. And they've made a TV adaptation called Love, Victor, where it's a different character this time, um, dealing with more or less similar issues. And he contacts Simon for advice. Uh, okay. So Simon, or the actor who played Simon, is back on the TV series, but as the narrator of the show. So that's still that familiar voice Oh, name. okay. That's so lovely. I really want to watch that. Um, and the reason why I want to watch that is because like I said I love a good love story Mm. and especially when it comes to queer representation in media, in film or television, it's so rare that you find yourself getting a sweet love story and you look at, just in recent years you'll get a movie like Moonlight Mm. that is absolutely beautifully told and a story that needs to be told and then you get a movie like Love, Simon that is a little tug at the heart Mm. things, simple love story and having the different types of stories is what is so important because you don't always want to look at queer love and queer relationships as this thing that needs to go through a struggle where it needs to be a secret or there needs to be abuse or there needs to be some kind of reason why there is no happy ending. You you still need the cheesy hour and a half. I'm going to go into this knowing that this is going to be a cute love story. Nothing bad really is going to happen. And at the end of the movie, the two people end up together. Yeah. So I really love that. And I hope that with Love, Victor as well, we continue to move in a direction where queer love stories are not queer love stories. It's just a love story. It's just a cheesy Hallmark type movie where, you know, it's going to be 90 minutes of sometimes a very predictable story mm. where you know exactly who is going to end up together but still be happy at the end of it. Um, there was another one that came out, was it this year? It was this year on Valentine's Day. The thing about Harry with oh. the guy from Grey's Anatomy whose name escapes me now. He's one of the new interns on Grey's Anatomy and he was in a very, very cute romance movie that came out on Valentine's Day. There was some the guy from who directed who did the Fosters, the TV show. It might be. It yeah. might be. But what was what what is that about? It was also just a very cute, cheesy love story where the main guy has to go home for I'm not sure if it's a funeral or a graduation. He needs to go home for something. And his friend or his mom phones him and says, you need to give this guy a lift home with you because he's in a different city. Mm. And the guy is his high school bully. Oh, well. And he's just like, oh my God, now I have to drive like 12 hours with my high school bully. Only to discover that his high school bully was only mean because he was also figuring out his own Mm. stuff. And they end up getting together. Spoiler alert at the end of the movie. Um, Very similar to what happened in the second season of Sex Education. If anyone hasn't seen season two of Sex Education, stop listening. Where uh, all of the names have escaped me. But the, the jock, the bully one from season one ended up being coming out in season two and ending up with the main character's best friend. Okay. It's very similar to that. So I think as long as we can continue like moving in a direction where no one is getting killed because they are gay, no one is having to Mm. go through the whole angels in America, HIV dying of AIDS type thing, 
I want to see more love, more romance without it being a gasp, a, oh my God, it's a story about yeah. gays. God, everything is fine. Gay people are fine. We can exist and do the same boring, cute things that straight people do. I think, yeah, that's the most important part. We, there needs to be just diversity of stories out there, you know, different types of stories because everybody's experience is different. So the more people's voices are heard Absolutely. and the more, you know, different experiences are represented, you know, the more people will, the more people will, will understand or the more people will, they'll just start becoming part of canon and part of normal. Ex- that's exactly what it is. I don't know if you've ever seen the show Vida. I have not, but I really do want to watch it. I think they just released their third and final season, which is also something that I'm so thankful for. As someone who's consumed TV for the last at least 10 years, I love when a TV show gets a heads up that, this is your final season. Mm-hmm. And the close like, it right. So that you get to close things right. Yeah. Yes. Um, and they had the chance to tell this three season story of Latina representation, firstly, and lesbian love. And I know nothing of the lesbian experience, but I watched and was so compelled when I grew up watching The L Word. That's why I've been a Jennifer mm-hmm. Beals fan for like the last 20 years of my life. So for me, when I say, let's tell more queer stories, I don't only want to see man-on-man action. I want to see some girl-on-girl action as well. And I want it to be told by people who are equipped to tell these stories, people Mm. who know the experience, people who are collaborating with people who know the experience, so that it's an authentic portrayal of what everyone's lives are. I think growing up and watching as much TV and movies as I have for the first 25 years of my life, it was a white man's world. Mm. And every love story you saw, every family show you saw revolved around a white person or a white family, a white family of cops, a white family of bakers, the white girl in the horror movie, Jennifer Love Hewitt, has a black friend, Brandy, mm-hmm. but the black girl is never the lead. So I'm so glad that we are at an age and a stage now in life and in our art where we are able to sample what we want. So I can purposely go out there and say, I want to see more things centered around the black experience and the queer experience. I do not have to watch normal terrestrial TV. Mm. So I do not need to watch this episode of white family in the suburbs tonight. I can go and watch a 90 minute movie about people of color. I love that we are constantly growing the art form and telling interesting stories, but that we now are at a very fortunate place where, like I said, you don't have to tell a story about struggle. Mm. You can have someone black, and I say black in air quotes, because I don't know if this has ever been something that they brought up in the show, but a show like Star Trek Discovery where you have a black woman at the helm of the spaceship. We are sending black people into space. Mm. We are not only sending black people off to be slaughtered or tortured or run away from their slave masters. Black people are in space. Black people are working in hospitals. We are getting a representation of what the world looks like. Yeah. Not that I acknowledge the existence of aliens. I'm not going to sit here and <laughs> say I'm one of those that believes that people are listening and I need a little tinfoil hat. But when we look at the world, we want to see every different shape, every different color, every different sexuality and gender representation. As much as we are learning about that right now, the best way for us to also educate people on that is to incorporate that into what we are consuming daily. It does not have to be 
one man or one woman making 2.5 children, you know? Mm. I was thinking, I remember when, when, I don't know, when we were younger, there was all these sitcoms where everyone was like a guy and a girl, like a Dama and Greg type situation. Two yes. guys, a girl and a coffee shop, whatever. I can't even remember what pizza place. Two guys, a girl and a pizza place, <laughs> yes. And like, there'd always be like this couple and then they would get together. And then Will and Grace came along. And, and I remember I was like, I don't understand, but now how is this going to work? And then it was such a beautiful show about friendship that I did not expect. And like, I mean, obviously being younger and having that kind of influence, I'm like, the kids growing up today with such a diverse TV, with such a diverse They movie, are very fortunate yeah. that they are not starved for representation the way that we were. Yeah. Like as I said, I latched onto that Jessica Alba never been kissed, like <laughs> the brownest person I'd seen in that movie. <laughs> and she was fairly light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's like the thing about, you mentioned Will and Grace. In our day, seeing something like that was still a gasp, clutch my pearls moment mm-hmm. to have a gay man and a straight woman best friends living together and not have the lead characters fall in love with each other. Yeah. I think that's why it was such a beloved show to us as well, because it was something that we weren't seeing on TV. So it was but it still felt girl, authentic but it still felt so authentic whereas if i had to discover will and grace now at this point in my life i probably would not find it as funny yeah because i'm like oh i've seen versions of this where a straight person and a gay person are friends mm. but 20 years ago when the show premiered we didn't have that on tv and also i think that what will and grace did was it showed different types of of gay people. Like, you know, you didn't just get like a stereotype. Like, yes, Jack in some ways was a stereotype, but it was just they had different characters and the relationships that Jack and Will had just brought in different aspects of different types of people. It wasn't enough black people, but I mean, you know, it's just like there was just more multifaceted than what we exactly. had seen before. That's the thing. Um, you mentioning Will and Grace and mentioning Jack and where people have this perceived notion that a gay man is a flamboyant, Mm. effeminate man. And a lot of shows, especially back in our day, when they dealt with a gay character, it was someone who was pretending to be straight, trying to be as manly as possible, to try and hide this shame that he was carrying Mm -hmm. around with him. And then you get a character like Jack that is so openly himself that us as the viewer, we kind of found ourselves in Will's shoes where Will was also always trying to tone Jack down Mm -hmm. and not have Jack be as flamboyant because that's how we saw the world back then. Mm -hmm. And Jack just constantly pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing Will out of his comfort zone. And that's why Jack is such a beloved character for us Mm -hmm. because it's not just a caricature of what a gay man is. I do think that it's very important as much as it was then, it still is today for you to show an effeminate, flamboyant gay man, to Mm. show us that there is absolutely nothing wrong with being that version of yourself. If you look at a show like True Blood that was genre fair about vampires and fairies and magic, you had a character like Lafayette Reynolds that worked Mm. in the diner who was a gay man and a witch, but he wore the most beautiful drop earrings in almost every episode. He always had his face beat done to perfection, showing you that you do not need to be a gay man masquerading as a straight man in a straight world. Accept yourself and go out there and be this version of yourself that you want the world to see because nothing is going to come of you parading around hiding who you are. Mm -hmm. And 
those are the stories that I love seeing. Give me someone like, I don't know if you've ever seen the show Banshee. No. It was an absolutely violent show with a very compelling story as well, but it was excessively violent with the guns and the shooting and the fighting and all of that. But in the very first season, if I'm not mistaken, they introduced a character called Job who was in cahoots with the lead character in the show. And Job is an Asian man, bald head, but Job comes into this diner in the most beautiful, flowy, kimono-type things with massive guns and shooting up everything. And that's what I want to see when I say, give me queer representation. Don't just give me the gay best friend Mm -hmm. or the gay jock hiding it from his team. Give me the badass cross-dressing man running out there with a bigger gun than the lead character shooting up the place. Send a gay man into space like they did with Star Trek Discovery. Give me gay and queer and people of color in every single facet that we can find Mm -hmm. in media. Whatever the white man is doing, let the gay man do that as well. Let the woman of color do that as well. Give us everything. So... So you were doing the fun thing on Twitter where you were you took pictures of people and you told stories. Oh yes. So I mean that was such a favor of mine. Like I, I probably read those stories so many times. So, you know, what prompted you to do that? And are you ever gonna put it into <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> a book form for this? Oh uh, you know what? Um Oh, I know exactly why this started. Lindy Mm -hmm. tweeted a picture of herself, like professional headshots that were done, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And she was wearing a top and a little blazer, everything. And I said she looks like the lead investigator, like in a police show in a seaside town. And I wrote a little story based on that one picture of her. And it just grew legs and it became a thing that I did for a while um, where people would literally send me pictures of themselves. I told them tweet the picture and then send me the tweet so that I have it in my DM so I can go back to it. And I would look at the pictures and I would just make up a funny story based on what the picture looked like. Um, And it was fun, but I have a tendency of using things as a distraction from work. So (laughs) when I I did that, it was only because I was not in the mood to work that day. And then the very next day, people were like, oh my word, do me, do me, do me. And I'm like, I have two days of work to catch up on, guys. Please, like, give me a break today. Um, I do think I'd like to do something like that again. I don't particularly fashion myself as a writer, but I do enjoy writing things down. Like one of the things that I've done over the lockdown period was I actually wrote three songs. Oh, yeah. Um, Because I have a lot of friends who are DJs or music producers And then I would always say, give me a beat and I'll write a song for it. Um, And I kept doing it and egging people on just to see if I can do it. And then one of my friends actually said to me, I need you to write a song and I'm going to make a beat for it. So I spent some time writing some music as well over the last few weeks. And I don't know if it will ever like see the light of day. And I don't care if the music ever gets released, but I love trying new things and challenging myself. So when I wrote those little stories, that was just me saying, oh my word, like, let's see how creative you can be. And some of the feedback that I got from those stories, you would have people in my curious cat saying, none of your stories are original. This sounds like the plot of a TV show or movie that I've already seen. And I'm like, okay, that's that's fine. That's the point of me writing. The, I'm writing these these stories that are relatable to people yeah. because, like, oh, I can see that happening. So, yeah, if I ever do get back into writing those little stories, 
I don't know if I'd ever put them in a book. I might just create like an Instagram page for them and then post the picture of the person that sent me the story or the picture and then have the story as the caption. But that is, once again, something I'll take on on a day where I'm not in the mood to work. <laughs> it's like a humans in New York type situation of humans I love in New York. that, yes. But mine would not be as tugging at the heartstrings as that. Mine would literally just be like, oh, you got murdered. Or, oh, <laughs> you fell in love with your next door neighbor. You definitely have a talent of, you, have, you definitely have stories inside of you. Stories that need to come out. A lot of the things that happen in my life are very, very interesting and extremely mm-hmm. funny sometimes where I'm sure people think there's no way that this is what your life is. But that honestly is what my life is. My life literally does sometimes feel like a TV show because a lot of the things we go through, I find myself saying, I wish there was a camera crew here that could have seen what you guys were doing or could have heard the conversation that happened because we want to see ourselves. Mm -hmm. We want people to know that the things you see on TV are just a fraction of what our world looks like. Thank you so much for listening. Once again, all the info about recommendations will be in the show notes. Uh, that was Sloan. You can find him on Twitter at, at Sloan Said So and on Instagram at, at the Sloan Burton. Me, you can find at Karen Walby on Instagram and Karen Walby's with an S on Twitter. You can find the podcast at, at Crashing on Pod on Twitter. We do so many fan polls about the current episode as well as fun facts, etc. You can also catch us on crashingonpodcast.com and you can send any feedback to crashingonpod at gmail.com. Don't forget to rate and review on Apple Podcasts and to recommend to all your friends and family. All episodes are edited and produced by Rebecca Barches. And thank you so much for listening. Until next week. Bye.